Coming up on tonight's episode of Faith versus Culture. Are you practicing what you preach? This coronavirus pandemic and all the quarantines is really giving us the chance to prove if our faith is authentic. We'll explore that and more tonight. To have a sex before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. There are problems of sin and habit that cannot be solved outside the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to this episode of Faith vs. Culture right here on the CBN News Channel. My name is Dan Andros. I'm managing editor over at faithwire.com. Joined as always by author, pastor Dale Partridge. Dale, what's going on? Hey, brother. Uh, excited to have this conversation. I think it's a great opportunity to do some self-evaluation and uh, really compare what the scriptures say to how we're living and then also compare what we're saying to our children and how we're living. And so I think it's a really uh, fun discussion to have that's, I think, very useful and very practical for right now. Before we start, though, I just want to, you know, because you're out on the West Coast and, um, you know, I'm here on the East Coast. And just generally, I mean, how are things for you? I mean, obviously, week by week, whenever we talk, this the situation on the ground completely changes. Uh, so what's what's life like out in your neck of the woods? Yeah, you know, we have a we have a respiratory compromised son who's got uh, asthma and potentially a narrowing trachea. So uh, this is one of those things that we go, hey, this is kind of a big deal for us. However, that said, we have still um, we we do we plant house churches, um, and up until we had a, a mandate to not gather, uh, we had been getting together safely under the right health precautions as a small, basically a small group. Um, in terms of just a few families washing hands, sitting you know a, a good distance apart from each other, but we were getting together and still having a really great time in fellowship with one another. Um, you know, it's not. I, I don't think it's as extreme as it is over on the East Coast here. Um, there's more space here. We are not far from Washington, which was another epicenter of the virus. Um, there, there seems to be something interesting um, that I'm starting to notice, at least on some of the data. Wherever people are generally healthier, it seems to be that there's less cases. It also seems to be wherever there's less airports, which makes sense. Um, and we we have a small airport here, but there's it's it's uh you know I have to drive to Portland if I'm going to actually go somewhere, um you know far. Um, and so the reality is is that you know in a lot of places in the in the United States, it's not nearly as um, extreme as others. The problem is, is the news makes it seem like, you know, you could be in Dayton, Ohio and feel like you're in New York City. Yeah. And, and, and we got to find balance and reason and, and structure. And again, um, we need to be obeying the laws of the government. At the same time, we also need to be realizing that the church is a living organism and is dependent. Its health is dependent upon the interpersonal relationships. And so there's got to be a balance there. Uh, that are you, you can walk out with wisdom, with caring for the compromised and elderly, with making being a good witness before men, but also not neglecting the relational component um, uh, of the church. And so uh, I think a lot of places are trying to figure those things out. But yeah, the West Coast seems to be, um, you know, a little bit less hectic than the East Coast. And where we live, especially in central Oregon, it seems to be, you know, we're, we're faring pretty well. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. And um, here I am in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philly. Um, and so a little bit of breathing room right here. I'm not like in the city of Philadelphia. So uh, so we have a similar thing. I mean, people I mean, obviously, our state is on you know lockdown at the moment. And but people are out. I mean, you're able to go to the grocery store. You're able to do at least some things. Um, I think you can in a lot of places. I haven't been out in a few days, but um, in a lot of places you can go through the drive through and pick up some food or something like that. So um, so there's still a semblance of normalcy. People seem to be doing their best to just, hey, let's just stay away from each other and try to get this thing to subside here. So, um, but it, but it does present a lot of challenges for for the Christian, uh, as we've talked about in previous episodes. And I would encourage you to go uh, check those out. How do you balance all of these things? How do you balance evangelizing when you 
are limited in your face to face interactions and things of that nature. So, um, so yeah, get, go back and check out those episodes, but we want to focus on your own household today. Um, Dale, I know we were looking at a couple of uh, posts that you just had recently, um, that were very thought provoking and it's something I've been thinking about and it's, I wrote an op-ed on this on Faithwire actually, where, um, you know, I've pondered this question about would my faith, I think we all have, like right? when you see like those stories of somebody facing an extreme trial, like, you know, a terrorist has kidnapped you and they threaten to uh, kill you or cut off your head unless you renounce Christ. And so would your faith stand under those trials? And I think I always tend to put it in that extreme category, like that sort of an example. But I think we're seeing that right now, like where we're looking at this uncertainty that's facing the world and our kids are watching us. And so they're seeing my faith right now and what it means. Like, am I panicked? Am I afraid? And so you, your faith is being tested right now, even if it's not personally taking your job yet or something of that nature that's really a really hard time, uh, you know, in the midst of coronavirus, like actually getting it or being very sick. Um, aside from that, just the general uncertainty, I think um, our kids are watching us. How, how are they responding to that? Because you know when our kids, like my kids are, my daughter just turned 15, you know, they're uh, 10, 9, and 4. And so when they all know the word coronavirus, they know what's going on, like, you know, it's a big thing. And so they're looking at us to see how we respond. And so uh, I think that question, will your faith stand? I think it's an important one. Where are you practicing what you're preaching to the kids uh, every day and to your friends or to your to your neighbors and to whoever else? Like, are you doing the same things that you say, hey, yeah, you trust God in all situations? Are you? And so I think we wanted to dive into a little bit of that today, Dale. Yeah, so I want to talk to the men for a second, guys. Um, this is an important opportunity because we are the spiritual heads of our home. So fathers, husbands, we sometimes forget that we're dealing with spiritual matters here. We have worry, anxiety, fear, faith, grace, sovereignty. Th these are some big questions, and it's a great opportunity to uh, display and demonstrate the trust that you have in Christ before your family. I would also say sometimes men, husbands, we think that our wives um, can handle some of these uh, realities as best as we can. And I think that it's pretty evident that there's a little bit uh, of a unique balance. There, there's the image of God, right? And in the image of God is both male and female, right? So you have the beautiful attributes of feminism and you have the beautiful attributes of masculinism um, that, are, that are broken up into two different people. And this, this idea is that men have often a lot more uh, uh, ability to deal with some of this uncertainty through logic, where women have a little bit more of the emotional side. And there's pros and cons to both sides, but together they make up the full image of God. In moments like these that are very uncertain, um, I think that we often th believe that our wives are just as strong as we are, and um, just as logical about this as we are. And I think that's a mistake. Some women might be. Some women might be able to uh, have this more than their husbands do. But in general, I think it's a great opportunity to make sure that you're leading your wife and going back and sitting in front of the throne room of the Lord and going, God, settle my heart. Because we think that just our kids are watching us, but our wives are watching us too. And I'll say this even from my own experience. My wife is constantly asking me, what do you think? What do you think's going on? How are you feeling about this? Did you hear this today? Did you hear that today? How should I, you know, and this is, this is common in a lot of homes. And it's a great opportunity to not just lead our children, but to lead our wives and our family at the same time. Um, you know, I, I think we, we could spend the next couple segments talking about the children, which is, I think, the main conversation that we're going to have today. Because there's an obvious and more um, evident reality of leading the children here than just our spouse as a man. But um, but I think it's a good conversation and important to talk about. So Dan, you can lead it out if you want to talk about that quote. Yeah. Uh, and however yeah, let's do go. it on the other side of the break, Dale, because we're about that time to, uh, to take a break here. So let's do that on the other side of the break. Uh, we'll continue this conversation and uh, we'll be back. It's Faith versus Culture here on the CBN News Channel.
Okay, we're back here on Faith versus Culture. This is the CBN News Channel. Dan Andros here, Dale Partridge there, and we are just chatting about, um, you know, we've got all this time in quarantine. Um, this is a good chance to evaluate how we're doing as a, as a family unit uh, as far as the Christian perspective goes. So, Dale, I wanted to read uh, this post that you had on Instagram because I think it strikes to the heart on, in what's at stake here. So, um, you write, what a time to make or break a child's trust in Christ. Parents, do you demonstrate divine peace or have you revealed the shallowness of your own faith? Do you praise God in the uncertainty or do you display doubt in his sovereignty? Crisis always exposes the state of faith. Lean in. So why don't, why don't we lean in on that one? Because there's a lot to chew on there. Yeah. So, you know, basically the, the core statement that I was making there is that crisis always reveals the state of faith. And we have a unique opportunity right now to um, demonstrate the genuineness, the authenticity of our faith before our children. And as I opened up that line is, you know, what a time to make or break a child's trust in Christ. And I want to talk about this for a second. Sometimes we, you know, we're saved by grace through faith. And sometimes we go, well, what is faith? Like, it's this kind of like ethereal substance of like belief believing in something that we can't see, right? That's kind of like the common response. I think when we look at it from a biblical term is that we're saved by faith, meaning that though I'm going to use the synonym for faith for a second that might help you grasp this. The synonym for faith is reliance or trust, right? We're saved by grace through relying on or trusting in Jesus. And this reality is is huge because we're in a position that um, that we're able to demonstrate that we are fully reliant upon Christ and his sovereignty, and we trust God in everything in these moments. And, you know, in terms of a theological side, what are we trusting him to do? What are we relying on him to do? Well, the short answer is that we're relying on him to give us a righteous verdict before God right? That, that's the core like theological side of it is that we're, our faith saves us because we're relying on Christ being righteous before God and we're in him and that's our trust. But beyond the salvation side of it, there is this, I trust God in all things, in all trials and all moments and all uncertainties and all worries and anxieties. I trust that his word is true and I rely on this like a rock. I stand on it. And in moments of uncertainty that, that create lots of calamity and create confusion, what a great way to talk about it with your children, about how many people around the world are freaking out right now. Many people, because you want to show them the contrast. That Look, there's so many people that are worried. There's so many people in this pandemonium right now. But you know what? We don't have to be that way because we trust in Christ and Christ has said these things in his word and we are standing and relying upon them. Not only that we're going to get a righteous verdict before God, but also that he is sovereign and good and just and he cares about us and all the things that happen in the world are according to his will and we will stand before him one day and he, we will go, everything that happened is good and you knew what you were doing. The world didn't go rogue. Nature didn't go rogue. Satan didn't be, wasn't able to do things without your permission. All these things are in your hands. Yeah. And that's an important perspective for our kids to understand right now. Yeah, and I think um, as the Bible says, we should always be looking for a chance to train up, train up our children. We should be, you know, from the sun up to the sun down, looking for chances to instruct. And I think you make a great point there. And um, you can use this as an opportunity to examine the deeper issues of the faith. I mean, we always complain about, oh, we see all these kids leaving the faith. And um, a lot of times it's because they haven't addressed these more difficult questions yeah. and, and heard an explanation for it. So when they go off to college or some other place and, you know, they're in, you know, they meet some atheist and the guy throws out some Richard Dawkins quote, they're like blown away by it. Like, wow, geez, my parents never told me that. Um, and so that's one reason why people maybe can have their faith shaken. But um, to your point, we can look at deeper issues like why, like why would something bad you talk bad happen like the coronavirus happen? Um, and you can use that as an opportunity to discuss that God is sovereign, uh, sovereign, like you mentioned, and He is sovereign overall. And nothing that happens doesn't come through His hand because 
you know, there are a lot of theologies out there that say that nothing of God is bad and that, uh, you know, or that, that none of the bad stuff comes from him. And he's sort of up there reacting. And you can discuss these issues because uh, when you examine a theology like that, there, there are clearly some holes in it. Because if that were the case, why, you know, if God can step in when he wants, then we seem to have a God who lets an awful lot of bad things happen. So why, why does he let those happen? Why does he only step in <laughs> sometimes? So, um, yep. you know, so we have to look at the Bible and, and use that as a chance to, to strengthen our kids' faith and understand that, like you said, all of these things, though we don't understand them now, are working together for his ultimate good and for for our ultimate good. And so we don't understand it. We can't compre- comprehend it. Um, but but who are we to, to question the maker? You know, where were we when he was laying the foundations of the earth? So yep. these are the sorts of things that we can plant into our children and let them know that, yes, there are answers for these things. They're not always easy, but there are answers for them. And it won't leave you flailing about in the wind. Amen. Yeah, I think this is a great, um, a great point. We just need to, to ha- recognize the opportunity, um, and not be so concerned with ourselves, but go, wow, what a great moment to sit before and go, hey, you know. And I've even talked to my my oldest and go, hey, let, let's look at some of the crazy reactions that people are having. Look at this person; they're so afraid. And they don't need to be. And we don't need to be. And I want to talk about that. You, you want to let them see the world a bit. Because they, they need to, you know, the Christian home can sometimes be an isolated place. And it's very censored. And so you want to be able to let them see what's actually happening out there. And let them contrast that with how people that follow Jesus respond to moments like these. And so we just hope that, yeah, you guys get these opportunities. I know in the next segment, we're going to talk about how do you actually walk that out inside the home? What should your home actually look like in matters and times like this? Amen. We'll do that right after the break. This is Faith versus Culture. You're watching the CBN News Channel. We'll be back in just a second. Welcome back to Faith versus Culture. Dan Andros here, Dale Partridge there. Don't forget, you can contact us. Let us know your thoughts, questions, comments, complaints, whatever you want to do. Uh, contact at faithwire.com. We read all of them, but uh, can only respond to a few. So um, uh, be patient with us there. But all right, Dale, um, another post that you had on this topic. I want to read a little bit about this and we'll we'll try to spend as much time as we can here. It's been said that uh, that a Christian home is to be a nursery for heaven. Um, that is to say, our homes are to be a reflection of God's kingdom. And in God's kingdom, there's no worry, no anxiety, no fear, no uncertainty. So let's uh, let's dive into that concept a little bit here, Dale, while the last few minutes yeah. we have. Yeah, so there's a, there's a really beautiful prayer devotional called the Valley of Vision. And one of the prayers has that phrase in there that says, uh, our homes are to be a nursery for heaven. And I think about that and you go, wow, what a, what a thing to think about, that we are to be ambassadors for Christ, that we are to create the culture of heaven in our home. And the culture of heaven is that there's a king and he's a con- control and there's no worry and there's no pain and there's no, you know, and now I'm not saying that we need to neglect the realities of life here, <laughs> but I'm just saying is that we, we keep this idea of reproducing uh, the culture of the throne room of God here in our homes, we're not overcome with anxiety and and worry and concern and confused. We know what's happening. We have the word of God and we can actually generate much of that culture in our houses if we aim to. We don't need to worry about people, our children seeing our human side. They will see that. What we do need to worry about is people seeing our Christ likeness, our kids seeing our Christ likeness. And so is your home like a, like a cradle that's sitting at the foot of God? And you don't have to worry about a thing because God's in control. Or is your home this place of, again, cultural, worldly worry and concern and politics in the news and and it's infiltrating all these different dimensions to your children's minds and 
and you're worried more about your citizenship on earth than you are about your citizenship on in heaven. And so it's important conversation to have and for you to think about. And um, I just want to encourage parents to really focus on creating that heavenly culture in their home in times like these. All right, great stuff. We'll be back to wrap it up and close this episode of Faith versus Culture when we come back on the other side of the break. I got invited in. I'm honored to be invited. And I was thinking of the song, Sing, and just a reminder uh, tonight for people that uh, no matter what the world tries to say about you, and no matter what the world tries to label you, you uh, God has a label for you tonight. And he says that you are my loved son and you're my loved daughter because he is a good father. So I thought we would sing that uh, together and uh, it was where we are. No, I heard a thousand stories for today. Thank you, Lord, but I Tender whisper of love in the dead of night and eternity. That you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Alright, girl. You could just It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm all right thanks so much for watching this episode of faith versus culture make sure you check out every episode on all of our social channels and on the cbn news channel's website so thanks for watching god bless stay safe out there wash your hands keep your distance let's try to let's try to flatten this curve and do all the other things they're trying to uh, let us do so that we can get back to normal as soon as possible. God bless you. Thanks for watching.